essentially Wham was the expression of our friendship. It was the humour, the vitality, the exuberance of youth. Hey, it was about us as youths and it represented the optimism and the drive and the aspiration of youth and the the limitless horizons of youth. friends very quickly. We had uh, a mutual sense of humour, a uh, schoolboy sense of humour, um, very juvenile, very pure art. Kind of That sort of creative combination of humour and, and messing around with, with music, um, and also the fact that other friends of ours were forming bands, and the, the sense that we wanted to, to write songs and perform grew. And in fact, the first three songs we wrote were Wham Rap, Club Tropicana, and Careless Whisper. My songwriting aspirations had been given a boost by a generous 18th birthday present from Mum and Dad. A white Fender Telecaster with a black scratch plate and a rosewood fretboard. In the evenings, I'd practice over and over, piecing together covers of the songs I loved and trying out interesting chord sequences that Yog and I could work on together. One particular idea seemed to evoke a sadness, suggesting a plaintive melody and a slow tempo rhythm. A few days later, Yog came round and I played it to him. What do you make of this? I said, working through the chords. He looked at me a little surprised. Oh my God, Andy, that goes perfectly with an idea I've had going round and round in my head. Play it again. I carried on playing the chords, Yog singing what would later become the haunting saxophone melody on Careless Whisper. Through an extraordinary coincidence, our separate ideas complemented each other perfectly. Careless Whisper came together. The largely minor bass chord progression I'd come up with suggested a lyric imbued with emotion and regret. And so Yogg decided to draw on his own teenage experience. and entirely um, coincidental coming together of, of two ideas. The, the, the core progression that I'd come up with and the, and the, and the tempo and the, and the kind of... Uh, um, the kind of song and track that, that that suggested just happened to go perfectly with, with the melody that he'd been working on. Now, I mean, I don't know whether... Because uh, all it was was the sa the, that saxophone melody at the time, and everything else we worked up from um, from that point. Off the, the first album because K 
careless whisper just outside at that point it, it, the style of wham and, and and what wham was really representing which was youthfulness and exuberance and that vitality and energy of youth and it just wasn't something that we could have, if we'd have stuck it on fantastic it would have been completely out of context It was apparent to us both that he would inevitably one day have to go beyond Wham to fully exploit his songwriting potential. And Ken Swissberg was, you know, he felt that that would be the perfect stepping off point. He asked me if, if I would consent to it, him releasing it as a, as a George Michael solo track. And so I agreed that he would release it as a, as a solo single. But, you know, it was, it was a Wham! release in the States. And it had, to be a, it had to be a Wham! track, really, in the States, because his profile in the United States just wasn't of, of a level that would have given Careless Whisper the best chance of success. So, you know, it, it, he understood that it had to be a, a Wham! track in, in the States to, in order for it to, to give it the best chance of being a, uh, a hit, which, you know, it was. It was, a, it was a number one, um, both, uh, well, in, in many countries, but certainly on both sides of the Atlantic. It's a, it's a song that um, I I'm, have a, a great deal of pride in. Shock. He, he, he grew to not to like it. Uh, <laughs> I don't know whether there's a bit of an albatross around his neck, but he... Uh, he uh, um, I, think, I think he was a little um, unfair about it because it, you know, we, it was written when we were I don't know, 17, 18. So it was never going to have a, the, the kind of depth of emotional intelligence he, uh, that he applied to, to uh, his latter songs. But that doesn't diminish the fact that it's a brilliant example of an audio manifestation of, 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 uh, of, a, of a creative idea.